Welcome back, Seth Bling here. It's time for the 13W2A snapshot review. We've got a lot of features for this one. There are named mobs. Uh, there's these new quartz blocks. Uh, I'm going to get your hopes up and then promptly dash them. Hint, hint, there isn't actually an ender chest uh, minecart. Um, trap chests were supposed to put redstone through walls, but it, it looks like it doesn't work just yet. Uh, there is a new TNT in a minecart uh, thingy, and there's these new activator rails that activate that. Hoppers have some new redstone mechanics, and I'll get to that, and I'll use those redstone mechanics to make a really, really simple, easy, very secure lock. All right, so let me let me go through these. Uh, I have this villager here named Dinnerbone. He wants seven, seven emeralds for an iron sword. I don't know if that's a good deal, but uh, there's, so there's a new feature where you can name mobs. If I right-click on this uh, this anvil, I can I can name it. So if I want to say maybe make a notch, so I, I can make a notch uh, notch spawn egg, and then when I use the spawn egg, it'll spawn a mob. And if I right-click on oh I'm spawning more mobs, yeah uh, yeah. If I right-click on him, you can see his name is Notch. He's got different trades. Uh, he's not displaying the name above him. That's because the uh, this feature here, where it displays the name above the mob, is only for map makers. You, you need to use an external tool like MC Edit or NBT Editors. Um, and I've updated my Change Mobs filter uh, it, so that you can do this uh, in MC Edit. So you can get that from the link in the video description. But only available the the nameplate above is only available for for map makers, unfortunately. But it does show it in the, uh, I mean, you, you know, you need creative mode to get spawn eggs anyway, so it's not, it's not like it's that much extra cheating. <laughs> uh, okay, so these, these things that appear to be ender chests in minecarts, they aren't actually, uh, but it does look a lot like it. I mean, it's got, if I right click it, I can, uh, you know, access it and, and put things in there. Uh, however, I can also right click this one and I'll get in the minecart. So what's up with that? You might be asking. All right, uh, let me continue before I tell you what's up with that. Here's an empty-looking minecart. If I right-click, I'll actually get a uh, another UI here. And I mean, this is just this one's just a normal minecart. You can get in and out of it. Uh, here's another one. It looks like a storage minecart. It is a storage minecart, and then here's another one that looks like a storage minecart and isn't. So basically what's going on here is that there's a new feature for map makers where they can uh, put any block they want inside of a minecart. <clears throat> so I've just put an ender chest block inside this minecart, but it doesn't actually function. Um, if I destroy it, will it drop? No, it doesn't even drop the block inside. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's purely for aesthetics, but uh, it, it is kind of cool looking. That's just for map makers also. Uh, I've updated my change entities filter. Uh, so if you want to do this for yourself in MC Edit, you can do that. Quartz blocks, you make these using the uh, the new nether quartz thing. They look very nice. Kind of regal. Kind of like marble. I guess quartz. Anyway, that's, that's all there is to that. Uh, trap chests were supposed to output redstone through walls, but it seems like there's a bug and they don't. I talked to Dinnerbone and confirmed that it is actually a bug. So, but that should be coming in an in a update soon. Alright, so we've got these uh, TNT minecarts right here. Uh, you just craft it by putting TNT on top of the minecart. Now, it's not going to do anything until it goes over these uh, these rails. These rails uh, need, a, need a power source. So... You have to put uh, some sort of power source in order to power them. If they don't, then um, you know the minecart's just gonna gonna go right past. Um, but if they are powered and the minecart rolls over them, there won't be a sound even. It'll just start blinking. Now you can cancel the uh, the detonation. So that's kind of cool actually to be able to have a, a cancelable detonation. But and also for traps, it would be cool to have it be silent. Although I talked to Dinnerbone and that's that's actually also a bug. It's supposed to make a sound. So, but okay, let's let's let it go off. All right, there we go. So that's TNT minecarts. That's pretty cool. That's a much more mobile way. I mean, 
even when it does make a sound, you can kind of light it somewhere and then send it off on the minecart rail uh, elsewhere, and it might be out of range of the person when the fuse goes off, so they might not even hear the fuse. Okay, this is a really cool, this is a really cool new set of features. The uh, the hopper um, is now controllable with redstone. So the lever here is powered, and that stops the hopper from outputting items to this chest. See, this chest is empty; it could receive items. If I turn the lever, if I turn the power off on this, uh, the hopper is going to start working. So you can turn it on and off. Very, very cool. Um, the comparator, if you recall, uh, the comparator outputs a signal based on how many items are in the uh, are in the container that's pointing away from. So it had it had a signal strength of two, and now it has a signal strength of one. Um, as it empties out, it's going to hit zero. So the way the hopper and they also changed the way the comparator works with respect to the to containers uh, just slightly. So it used to be you had to have like 17 items or so in the hopper in order for it to output a signal. Now any any items at all will will trigger the comparator. So one item and you'll get a, a signal strength of one. Uh, if you go up to 21, so a third of a stack. Uh, you'll get two, and then a full stack is three, so it's because it's, um, you know, a fifth of the hopper is taken up, so that's a fifth of the max signal strength, three. If I put another diamond in here, it should bump it up to four, because it's just barely above a fifth. So I think it's a much more sane way of doing it. I actually suggested this to Dinnerbone. Uh, there were also interesting things with, like, if you would have potions, it would, like, if you had something like this where you had uh, four potions in here it would it would be like it would have a signal strength of 12 and if you would put a single diamond in it would drop the signal strength down to one and it was really weird so I uh, I suggested a different way where uh, basically it just takes the fullness of each slot so uh, the amount of items in that slot divided by the maximum number of items possible for a stack of that item type. So for a potion, this slot's completely full, um, but this slot would only be half full, even though it's 32 items, whereas this is only one item. But anyway, so it takes the average over all of those and multiplies by 15, basically, uh, in order to calculate the output strength. So thanks <laughs> thanks to Nerbone for taking my suggestion there. Um, so this is this is really cool. This can be definitely be used for automated sorting. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see some of that in coming days. Now, what I've done over here is uh, is a really, really, really simple and small uh, lock. Very, very cool. So the way this thing works is if you put in the map, the correct map, the door opens, uh, the map goes away, uh, and you can just pick it up from this chest right here. And, uh, and then if you want to exit you can close the door by pushing this. Uh, if I put another block in here, like a diamond, it's not going to do anything. If I put a different map, so that was map zero. This is map one. If I put that in there, not going to do anything. Uh, yeah. So if you have world guard or some some sort of protection on your base, and people can't break blocks, this is completely secure and very very easy to retrieve your key. Uh, works very quickly. There, it's not going to be prone to any bugs at all. This is a much better version of the map sorting system than we had before. And it's very simple to build, too. It takes up almost no space. So we've got what we've got here is a hopper with 21 items in it. This is just the barely the amount of items before it'll hit a signal strength of 2 on this comparator. So you'll notice this one's powered, but this one isn't. If we get one more item in here, and in fact, I'll just drop another one in, uh, you can see we get a signal strength of 2. That's what turns off this torch. When the torch goes off, the hopper starts outputting items, and that's what you know allows the map to go in here. So basically this hopper will keep, um, will always keep 21 items in it, uh, even as you add more maps. It'll just filter out the extra maps. And then whenever it gets, um, Whenever it gets that red redstone signal, I just use that redstone signal over here to uh, to activate these sticky pistons, uh, and so they only get activated for a moment because as soon as uh, the item gets put in, it gets filtered out into here, and the comparator turns off, and and this signal turns back off. There, sorry, this signal the, from the torch turns back off. 
And then uh, the button over here, it's just uh, there's just uh, it just triggers these normal pistons to to put the door back in place. But really, really cool system. I I think this is pretty neat. And uh, like I was talking about with my my uh, map lock system before, it's very secure. Uh, you know, and you can duplicate duplicate the key very easily too, because it's just a map. And uh, and no one no one else can get a copy of the map unless you give it to them or, you know, if they kill you, they can take a copy of the map. But it's very easy to change out the lock too. All you need is uh, 21 copies of the map, which is a lot of maps. But uh, but still, still a very cool system. So uh, those are most of the changes in the snapshot. There's a couple more that I'll just mention without demonstrating. Uh, skeletons now shoot 15 blocks instead of 10 blocks. Makes them kind of annoying. <laughs> and then there's also animated textures. I couldn't really get them to work uh, in time for this video. Uh, but basically, texture packs work a little bit differently, and, and now you can animate any texture at all in the game. So you could animate sandstone if you wanted. You could animate uh, the side of a piston, anything at all. And apparently it's supposed to be pretty easy. But <laughs> again, I, I couldn't quite get it to work. Anyway, some really cool features. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. fine but you can't